I'm Roger. Hi there, and welcome to daytime. Here we are. Well, it's not exactly we. It's, I, I have to check. I'm not even sure if that's a he or a her, our hyacinth macaw, a her. I was going to say, we have to turn them over to find out. I obviously want to be completely cliche and say, look it, daytime has gone to the birds. <laughs> oh, oh, see? Groan, groan, groan. You're actually getting a sneak peek at our first guests who will be joining us a little Very later on. Eh? And uh, sometimes they have a lot to say. Other times not so much, but we will find out today because the annual parent conference, Canadian parent conference, by the way, is happening in Guelph. Very exciting, mm -hmm. and we did we did have we have uh, we had uh, some vocal warm ups be, uh, earlier, and I can tell you that. Uh, oh, you were working with them. Oh, were they? Or well, were I'll they, you, they do with not you? require any miking whatsoever. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, I, think I, I once I, I once read somewhere, and I'm sure our experts will, will correct me in the, in the segment uh, that we'll, we'll share with them. Um, it's something that, I guess it's like 95 decibels. Their their oh um, really their their squawk can can reach, uh, and one of the parrots uh, has uh, this is crazy 600 pound pressure in its in its bite. To it's, crack. It's cra their well, they, their they, they, beaks they are rest, so right? strong, well, that's so it. unbelievably strong. You don't want to stick your finger out in front of them and have them just kind of nip at it You at most all. certainly do not, because I mean, yeah. that's it. They're, I mean, nature has designed them very, very efficiently to, to allow them to source out. There we go, 600 pounds. That, our friend right there, 600 pounds. So I will not be doing the lion tamer thing and trying to stick my head between <laughs> those, those uh, vices of pain. Um, but they are certainly beautiful, beautiful birds. Stunning. You know, and you were telling me before. Did your parents not have a parrot? Yes, they, they maybe see, there not you. There we go. There we go. Here it is. Squawk number one. <laughs> yes, they did actually had Indy, and, and I mean, it was, was something. And we're going to get into the segment. Parrots are something that, me, although incredibly beautiful and incredibly intelligent, they require a specific type uh, household, um, a, a very attentive household, and it's a it's a lifelong commitment. So as beautiful as they are, if you're going to look at parrots, and again, we'll get into this, um, you really need to invest the time into researching and ensuring that, in fact, you are bringing these these beautiful, beautiful animals to. The right home so uh, well and I remember hearing stories that um, you have to think about the life expectancy of a parrot as well <sighs> if you're in your 40s and suddenly have baby parrot you're raising you grew up in that chances are the bird could outlive you so one of the things they'll tell you but you got to think about that you know, it's not just the kids you've got to think about after you've gone. N now you've got to think about the parrot and what's going to happen to it once you're gone. Well, they can live 60 to 100 years. Wow. And, and this was something that, I mean, I, again, I just my parents, as much as they loved India, just it wasn't the right situation for India because uh, because of the lifestyle he, he spent, he required too much time, or they had to put him in his cage uh, more than he, he would, would have been fair. So I finally, uh, we, we finally arrived at the decision to um, to hand him to a, to a home that, that would take proper care of him. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, my brother and I, I, I had, this parrot hated my guts, like hated my guts. And I, to this day, do, don't know why, because I have this great thing with animals. I love animals. You but this do. parrot and you're hated me with a white animals. hot, yes, well, hated me with a white hot hatred. In fact, when it would get into the cage, it would dive bomb me. And as it would dive bomb, it'd go, <laughs> 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 and it was like. You didn't steal its crackers I, I don't know sometime, what it did. accidentally, and, and, or. No, no, and these things are incredibly intelligent. And their, 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 their uh, ability to remember things, too, is phenomenal. And what I always thought was funny was that we could tell if Andy was out of the cage because these they could pick locks. They could he could get out of his, uh, really? his cage. Uh, yeah, I mean the the the, 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 sof the sophisticated locking apparatus that we had to employ to keep Indy in his cage was 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 it would ramp up every time. But he would get out of his cage, and we could always hear him. We could tell he was up to no good because we hear. Indy, be a good boy. He'd be talking to himself. He'd be saying, be a good boy. Be, meanwhile, he's massacring, you know, a chair. Um, it, it was really, really quite intelligent and beautiful. But again, and we're going to get into it when we, when, when we get into the kitchen, uh, you really need to ensure that, that uh, you do your research and you're bringing, um, uh, you know, a parrot home to, to the right sort of home well, that will support it. So We have our friends from the KW Humane Society we'll join us on a weekly basis. And mm -hmm. that's one thing they always say. You know, you want to make sure that when you're bringing a pet into your home, it's a forever home. Come back. Jay goes to the birds. <laughs> he will. It is the Canadian Parrot Conference coming up in Guelph. We'll give you the details next. Stay with us.
All right, welcome back to Daytime. Well, as we mentioned uh, opening the show, we were talking about the sophistication of these absolutely stunning animals that we call parrots. Uh, and if you've ever entertained the idea of potentially uh, looking into having one, you would definitely want to take advantage of this weekend, uh, November 13th, 14th. Uh, the Canadian Parrot Conference is happening at the Holiday Inn in Guelph. And here to tell us more uh, are... are <laughs> How are you doing there? Uh, is, is, is Susan Payne, as well as Debbie Johnson. Uh, Susan is actually uh, the director of the Parrot Conference, and then we have uh, Debbie, who is an educator. And maybe you could tell us a bit about, um, uh, about the conference itself, and then I'd like to get into some of the finer points of our feathered friends here, if you don't mind. So maybe you okay. can tell us about the conference. Thank you. Uh, the conference is being held on um, this weekend, uh, the 13th, 14th of November. It's open to the general public and also um, to the seasoned parrot owner as well. We have educators coming from uh, as far away as Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can register for the weekend for all of the uh, speakers and the talks and the trade show. Or if you want to just come out uh, from the general public, you're welcome to come out and visit the, um, the trade show. Uh, we have lots of parrots coming out. A lot of the people bring their own parrots. And it's a great way to interact, to learn a little bit more about the parrots. And also, you know, if you're thinking about bringing a parrot into your home, this is the perfect opportunity to come out. Um, Debbie is going to be having a, introducing a new program this year, which is going to really highlight what living with feathered friends is all about. And I'll let her tell you a little bit more about that. So we hope you'll come out. We have a family, um, uh, it's $3 a person or $5 for a couple or a family. And um, we hope to see you out there. And again, I mean, this is something that, I mean, Debbie, education is, is, is integral because, I mean, these are not something, I mean, I think we, we, we make the, the um, kind of the foolish or something, all we need to do is, is put them in a cage with food and water, and it's that simple. They're a low-maintenance pet, but that is very much, I mean, as I had mentioned at the top of the show, I mean, un, uh, unfortunately, my parents were in a situation where they actually had to find a better home for their parrot because they couldn't provide Indy with the, the upkeep and the, the love and attention that, that, that he required and deserved. So um, maybe you could speak of that. I mean, you do a lot of education. Maybe talk about some of the, the popular misconceptions and about some things that people should know. Excellent. Well, you know, a lot of people come into pet stores and they look at a bird in a cage and they think, wow, first of all, this is an animal that's going to be able to talk, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And also, well, it lives in a cage, so how difficult could it be to actually take care of it? In actual fact, these are very high maintenance animals, mm -hmm. as you said. Um, the way that I generally explain it to people is we're looking at, for a bird of this size or even this size, typically about... Uh, the equivalent work of owning three dogs You're kidding. for one bird. Wow. Good comparison. Yeah. They need lots of interaction. You can't leave a bird sitting alone in a cage. You need to have the bird out working with the family, being a part of, of what you're doing. Well, and this is it. I mean, they are they're an incredibly sophisticated animal. I mean, we talk about the ability to speak. <laughs> one thing I learned is you don't swear around them. <laughs> I did that growing up. I remember coming home and my mom was so angry. She's like, who has been swearing in front of the parrot? And it takes a long time to get rid of that, you know? It does, But yeah. I mean, they are, they're incredible. And they're, they're a very, um, it's they're it's really funny. bond. It's, it's they bond it's with okay. people. One thing I noted with Indy is that with my mom in particular, there was a, there was a, a really um, uh, a kind of almost a singular love for my mom in a lot of ways too. And it's, it's, it can be a little, a little complicated uh, in terms of other members of the household. I know that he did, wasn't so responsive to men. Is this a common thing for, for parrots? It's not that they're not responsive to men. It's usually what happens is people will have one person in the family who's mm -hmm. the primary caregiver and mm -hmm. the bird tends to get close to that person and they can almost see that person as a mate. So they get very protective. Mm -hmm. They will go after other family members. So it's very important when you're interacting with your bird that everybody in the family handles it. The bird gets used to every member of the family so that it's not a one-person bird. Mm -hmm. And especially think about the longevity of these birds. Um, we want to make sure that they're socialized so that when the day does come mm -hmm. that you're no longer able to take care of it. It's not quite as traumatic to have to move to another person. Of course. And again, we were talking about the fact that these, these beautiful creatures can live 60, years. And yeah. so you have to think forward in that, uh, in that way just to ensure that they do get the love and the attention. This is my new girlfriend right here. We're just having a little cuddle here, aren't we? Lovely, 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 and that's it. I mean, they're they're be they're, they're there is a lot of character and a lot of personality to each of them. Each of these birds, in the in the short time that we've had them on set, have very distinct personalities. Very definitely, and you'll find that in any bird that you get. Um, it's very important to understand the personality and to work with the bird to leverage that and make sure that mm. it's very happy and it's, it's having a life that it's really excited about. And maybe you could talk about, in terms of the education programs that you provide, I mean, this goes beyond the, just the conference. You do, uh, do uh, op um, operate other educational opportunities. Maybe we could talk about uh, a bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jazz and Dusty are two of the birds that go out on a regular basis. We have four that we take out normally. And we've presented to over 8,000 kids in schools uh, right 
across the Greater Toronto Area and Southern Ontario. We go to nursing homes, we go to groups like scouts and guides and so forth to teach people about what the birds are all mm -hmm. about because often kids have never seen a bird like this. Um, and it's especially interesting when you're working with inner city kids. Um, this is just totally beyond their scope of experience. So it's a great opportunity not just to learn about the birds, but to get a bit of a connection with nature and understand what animals are all about. Sorry, I, I feel like I'm slow dancing right now with her. I want to play <laughs> careless whispers and just start going in a circle. We're having a, we're having a wee bit of a cuddle here. But it's all great. But I mean, this is this is something that, that again, that I find that uh, animals more so than, than even humans in, in a lot of cases have the ability to draw people out. So I can understand the benefit with seniors and again, uh, you know, youth to interacting with these uh, these animals and getting a, um, uh, developing a bit of a bond and understanding with them. But again, this is the point about the conferences, getting people out there. This is not only for the people that are engaged in, in uh, raising parrots themselves already, this is for anybody who's interested in finding out more. Um, and, and having an opportunity to talk to a great number of people all uh, with various different degrees of expertise in the individual species but also in the handling of them. So um, I mean what sort of things should people maybe kind of come in advance with when they come to the to, to the conference or any sort of a uh, you know uh, in terms of you know a list of questions or, or anything yeah. like that? Definitely a list of questions. Don't forget your camera. Mm -hmm. Lots of photo opportunities. I was going to say these are very And very uh, you know, a, a notebook uh, would be great because there's so many things to learn. We're going to have some handouts for people as well uh, to take home. And as I said, just talk to everybody. Find out the reality of, of living with the different types of birds. Depends on the type of family that you have, how much time you have, how many kids you have. You know, do you go out a lot? Do you travel a lot? There's just so much to to. To, to encompass so and it just uh, just in advance to yep. get ready you, you might want to try visiting canadianparrotconference.ca for more yep. information about the upcoming event this weekend at the holiday inn in guelph as well as visit uh the the, the uh, bluebirdlearning.com to find mm -hmm. out about the edu educational program so if you are interested in potentially about bringing parrots into your your school or into your uh into your retirement group and uh learning more then obviously debbie would be someone you'd want to speak to and i want to thank you so much for bringing our friends on set here today much. i mean again i'm just having a, a love in right now <laughs> we're just you're just so beautiful i'm gonna just turn you to camera so that you can be seen here. You've been so bashful. What a pretty girl. <laughs> all right, well, again, to you both, to you all, thank, thank you. you so much again. Thank you. More thank daytime you. to come, so stay with us. Well, I'm not, I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, there was just because of my, my history with, with Indy, I was a bit on the nervous side, but I fell in love with, with my beautiful The blue. hyacinth. Hyacinth, macaw, was it? Hyacinth, hyacinth macaw. macaw. She was absolutely stunning. She was just, and apparently I was eliciting all the proper responses. The feathers were coming up on the back of the neck, which is That's a, good a good sign. sign. Okay. Which is a good sign. But again, ridiculously intelligent creatures. Like they're something that, um, they're more than just a, a pretty animal that sits in a cage. They, they really, uh, and, and they, they, they feed off of human interaction as well. And as we noted, one of the reasons why the one parrot kept quiet was because she was, she was being loved. The second you stopped loving her. I love the way that, that Debbie was petting mm -hmm. the parrot it was she was actually I was gonna say going against the grain mm -hmm. it's feathers not grain but she was brushing the feathers up and the bird just seemed to love it absolutely and yeah. you could see that beautiful orange color underneath yeah and I'm glad that that my parrot was loving me because with that 600 pound per square inch jaw or beak that it had I'm just glad it didn't <laughs> decide to uh, re-pierce me ear my ear or something like that uh, <laughs> from my from my years in the early 90s there we go. we're gonna give you the details and that a very special guest speaker coming to town for that one very good. All, All coming up on tomorrow's daytime. Have a great evening, folks. See you later.